I'm here to present you Philo. And Philo is a, what we call say, a Newman computing framework for, for comparative genomics. His, his name looks scary here, but what we're doing is actually very simple. What we want to do with Philo is to help genetic research, to perform techniques to make better genetic research. So you hold her of yourself, inside you have a nucleus, you have a, a chromosomes, and inside this chromosome that you see here, you have what we call, we have the DNA. And the DNA encodes for all the genetic code that basically encodes you. Maybe you heard about the next generation's uh, sequencing techniques. We're able to sequence a single genome for less than 1,000 bucks in something like a day. That means that we'll have soon the genome of everybody all around. And we need to uh, analyze this code to understand how it works, because having the code by itself tells us nothing. We need to understand its structure. We need to understand what are the important patterns in these genomes. And that's why we're doing in genetic research. Of course, you can do it with that with computers. But that's another observation, which is actually at the base of what we call the citizen science. And what I'm talking of today is not only about Philo, but perhaps about the impact in general of citizen science on the way we're conducting research. A lot of people all around the world, lot, especially kids maybe, but it's not true because I'm playing too, are playing uh, computer games all the time. And sometimes it's very healthy. You're working hard or something, you need to make a break. And what's better than just make a five minute break playing a game just to, to, to have a rest? The problem is that when you go back to work, you always think, okay, I, lose, I lost my time, I waste time. Every time that you're playing video games, you're actually solving a problem. And in that sense, you're spending time to computing something. The question I'm trying to address through this research is how can we use all the computing power that you're generating when you're playing games to analyze the genetic code? So more precisely, this is how looks what genetics are looking. This is what we call the multiple sequence alignment. It's basically the genome of a lot of different species that are aligned together. And the idea behind is that we need to highlight the similar regions. So we need to build this sort of maps to provide to the geneticist afterward the tools, the data, to, um, to perform the research and understanding the genetic code. But if I give you that like that and I ask you to help us to, to make this data, you probably won't understand anything about it. It would, it would be just uh, for you, I mean, even for me, just a, a series of letters and uh, you have no idea to do with it. The idea is to transform that into a very casual game, a very simple puzzle that anyone can play anytime even without thinking is helping science just because you want to, to play and relax. But at the same time, you have the reward that the time that you were supposed to, to waste will be used to uh, make this uh, multiple sequence alignment I showed you before, to compute the data that the geneticist need. So you probably heard about crowdsourcing first. So crowdsourcing, basically, it's a scientific design program that asks you to, take, to download this program to your computer to solve uh, their problem. But you have no idea what you're doing yet. You just, they just want that you share your resources. And if you ask to thousands and thousands of people to download your program, to run it on your computer, and then after you gather all this computing power, you end up with a big and nice computer. But basically, you're doing nothing except sharing your resources. Citizen science goes beyond that. Citizen science wants you to be involved in a research. You all have the capacity of making choice and uh, solving some problem. And a lot of problems in science, some tasks that we need to perform on a daily basis, are not necessarily very complicated. We need your help. When computer cannot do the job for us, and only human uh, can do it, at least with the current techniques, then we need people to help. It can be, for instance, as the bird count here, or the Seattle Aquarium, when you can just go to the soil and try to find some microorganisms inside. So a short timeline of all this citizen science approach is a very old one. It can, it's actually the first, historically, the first reference I thought of that is the Antimbone Society Christmas bird count. Basically ask people around the world to just to, to count the, um, 
to, to count the birds. But something came up and changed radically how the way citizen science may be perceived. I mean, it's not only for citizen science, but you all heard about the World Wide Web, of course. That changed everything here, because we're able to exchange this information and reach anybody all around the world at any time. And once we have this wonderful tool, we've seen the operation of a lot of different uh, new citizen science approach. The first one, 2006, was probably Stardust, which basically the idea was to look at the microscope images, try to identify uh, interstellar dust inside the images. A bit later came Galaxy Zoo. Galaxy Zoo was, we have a lot of images taken by Hubble, and we want to identify galaxies inside. And computers don't know how to do that very well, so why don't we give the pictures, the images to people around the world and help us to find the galaxy in these images. In 2008, the citizen science approach entered in the biology area with the game actually Foldit, where the game is basically you have the sequences and you're trying to fold into different manner in, a, in order to find the structure of, your, uh, of a protein. Philo is exactly the successor of, of Foldit, but it brings a new dimension I will uh, explain a bit more today. So the goal of Philo uh, here is to compare genomes. Why is it important? And what is comparative genomics? The idea is that now we have genomes for approximately everybody and every microbe all around the world. We have all these data, but by themselves, I told you, they tell us nothing. To use this data, we need to compare them one to one in order to reveal similar region and conserved region. If you think about it, if a special pattern in your genome has been conserved uh, during, a, uh, is shared by you and another organism, it means that this pattern has been conserved during evolution. It means it has been there for a long time. If it's there for a long time, there's a reason for that. It's because it's functionally important. And the only way for us to reveal this information is to make what we call the comparative genomics. So now if you want to have a closer look at what we're doing exactly, is that we have these chains of DNA. So it's a word made by later ACGT. And what we want to do is to create alignments such that we will create colon with the same, uh, what we call here, nucleotide. So you can see in this colon here, you have all AAA. And the idea is creating an alignment that maximizes this number of colon of identical nucleotide and minimize the number of uh, gaps, so the dash that you see here, and eventually uh, mismatch. So you see here is another conserved colon. And why is it interesting? What's the link with diseases after that? Is that if after, once you have the alignment, you saw that this region is highly conserved, but in one genome you see one mutation here. This is potentially the source of the genetic disease. So having this high resolution, multiple sequence alignment is key to under, understand the source of genetic diseases. The problem is proven to be hard. It's not hard because it, it looks hard like that. It's hard because it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> in, in computer science, we have, uh, there's a world field of theory, which is the theory of complexity, where the, the goal of, of, of this field is to define when a problem can be solved efficiently with a simple algorithm, or if there doesn't exist an algorithm that runs fast enough to provide you a solution in a reasonable time. It can be very surprising. Sometimes you can have very, sim very complicated program that looks very complicated that you can solve very easily. Sometimes that's the opposite. And what has been shown is that the multiple sequence alignment is indeed a problem that we call here NP-hard. Why are the algorithm, the computer, very bad? Is it because what they're trying to do, basically, is just to look at all potential solutions to find the best one, and there's too many of them. But human, actually across evolution, have developed an intuition for a visual pattern and deal very easily with visual pattern. So if you can transform a multiple sequence alignment into a game that will be about creating visual similar pattern, in our case, colon of the same, with the same nucleotide, then we have chance that human will basically go straight to the point, get the good solution, and won't bother to study all the solution. 
But I told you that Philo was actually beyond the classical citizen science approach. Why I say that is because classical citizen science approach developed to help you to do the same work as scientists. They're creating some interface, and there is no barrier between you and the science, in one sense. Here, Philo aims to basically transform this multiple sequence element problem into a very simple uh, game that everybody can play anytime, anywhere. If you look at this picture, you see that here, 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 and here, people are on their phone, and most likely they will play in some very simple game, just spend their time during the transportation. And we want to, to use that. In one sense, what we want to do it is to recycle the energy we lose any day when we're doing something that, that looks useless, but I won't say useless, because thanks to Philo, it won't be useless. So here is the game. It is the board, how it looks. And we can see that we did a big work in terms of simplifying genetic code. There's no question of uh, A, C, G, T here. We try basically just to design an interface that will, uh, that will make the mood very easy. So you go to the web page, you have home that explain you the different uh, motivational problem. You have some um, uh, information about genetics in general. And you have this interface which basically you can choose the puzzle, so either by a random level or by diseases. We can sh share that earth, uh, the di digestive system, metabolic disorder. Well, let's try random. So the idea is that here you will basically move these blocks in order to basically have the maximum correspondence. And when you have a good match, basically the idea is that you're able to go to the next stage and you can add one sequence to your alignment. And when you have finished your puzzle, so this one is also a very simple one, you can submit it and it's returned to our server. And basically what you have is the series of uh, information about what, where you contribute. I mean, the, the disease associated with your puzzles, uh, the number of times it has been played, and who has the best score. We launched this project in November 2010, and we have a, a, a approximately half a million of hits where people try to solve puzzles, and 300,000 300, of them were completed. 15,000 uh, people registered, and now what we did is that we gathered a solution, we just finished to analyze them, we reinsert them into the genome, into the original location, and we found that it was a kind of a, we didn't hope such a good result, but perhaps the number would tell you too much for you, but we showed that 40% of the uh, alignment we provided indeed a real improvement. So this method works, and we're able to make better than the best method, the best algorithm uh, currently used. But we want to go beyond that. We achieved something which, that works, which is scientific, scientifically valid, and people participating, but we want to grow. And we want also to um, enable people to, to share their, their results and to spread the word. And what's more natural than to integrate that into the social network? So the new version of Philo that actually will be released uh, today will be a pre-release. We'll integrate now a Facebook login so you can log in through your Facebook account, just a click. And we'll have a lot of interesting features that will be, first you have challenges, you can earn trophy depending, so that will help you to motivate you to, to grow in a game and learn some uh, basic techniques. A challenge system that will enable you basically to challenge friends or to send a puzzle to other people for different reasons. You can say, yeah, I'm very good at this one, I bet you never beat me. Or you can say, okay, I suck, I mean, please help me and uh, solve it. So that's a lot of pretty different reasons. But, but the idea is that through this system, we hope that we'll be able to uh, make something entertaining and that, uh, that will help to spread the community, um, to expand the community of Philo. Is that it? No, because if you look at the way we're using computers now, it's radically changing. Very soon, I mean, around the, the two, 2014, it is thought that basically we have more mobile devices than computer used. And we want to jump on that. And that means that we have to change and redesign the interface. This is a work that's been sponsored by Nokia. Was to basically re-implement a game just on the cell phone, a classical cell phone, even touch, a non-touch screen phone. So I can show you very briefly how it works. So basically here you can choose the game, choose a random level, exactly as the full interface when you move here. But we want to go beyond that too. And now we have also what we call um, this JavaScript version, but basically JavaScript is just language, 
but it means that you can play it on your iPad. And it's exactly the same principle. And exactly as you were able to play with the previous Philo, now you can even play exactly the same way the Flash uh, app. So we're working a lot about expanding this, uh, this casual game to make it available for any platform all around the world so we can have a powerful tool to solve these diseases. Just to conclude this talk, uh, I want to emphasize the, that we still need scientists here. A very big debate now is would be popularity against populism. We need to, this genetic research is still a very hard task. What we're trying to do with Philo is to build, to create this data that will be afterward analyzed by geneticists to understand how it works. The work is very important, it's crucial as doing with Philo, but I, I cannot tell you that you will solve the disease by yourself. But I can tell you that the, the energy you're spending in that will greatly help to solve the, uh, the problem. So if you want to apply this, we have to be sure so that uh, the problem has been proven uh, difficult, that's what I was discussing before. And also, what I like in this project, uh, above everything, is the educational part. We're living in a world when uh, you heard about this world about genetics, about uh, protein folding all, all over, but you have no clue about what is it. And playing this game is also a door that will enable you to understand what the challenge of our world. Why is it important to continue science? Why is it important to, uh, to solve this problem? And you won't be, become a full scientist uh, with, a fil uh, with Philo, but it can give you a taste to become one and perhaps to join McGill. I just want to thank the different participants here. So Mathieu Blanchet was a professor at McGill with me, and Ruiz Tarmenta was my office mate at MIT and we developed this idea together. And this wonderful team of Alfred Kam, Elin Zero, Shoyu, Karen Slung, and Daniel Quack, and uh, Gary Romanis and uh, Alex uh, Kafrikov, that are the two original creators of the game that helped design it. So I work with a lot of wonderful students, and I really want to thank them here, because without them, this uh, game wouldn't exist. And of course, uh, the sponsor, Epic for this World, and has promised the URL for the game, Philo. Thank you.